Greetings developers and welcome back. This is going to be part two of the development teleport series. This is going to be showing off uh, how you can use the teleport list with a first person template or like a first person style game. So not just the third person like you saw in the last video. We now have a first person template. You can run around here and see here shooting and whatever so maybe you have a first person game that you already have yourself and you want to import this same setup all right so assuming that you've uh plugged this in from the marketplace uh i'm just going to assume that you have it already set up uh in your content browser so you can see here uh development teleport and it's the same thing like we did last time uh but if this is your first time you just skipped ahead to the first person stuff that's no worries we'll uh, jump through the same process. Um, so kind of like the last time, we'll uh, double check our world settings. You can see here how we have whatever our game mode is. So this is the BP first person template. So first person game mode has a first person character pawn. Uh, but like we recommend, um, this makes more sense to be put on the player controller because you might die and respawn and you might need to or you might respawn as a different character class or whatever so the player controller when it uh is already set up for multiplayer then this will have the component for whenever you want to teleport around the map uh so let's open that up here so i got my content browser just on the other screen i'll pull it down inside of here i will double click that and that came up on a different screen and now i can just go add and again dev teleporter component that's all you need to do compile and save that and that should be good to go uh all right so the next thing that we're going to need as well is the actual teleport points themselves so we can minimize that go into our development teleport folder inside of blueprints dev teleport and in here drag the actual teleport locations so you can drag one out place it down and as soon as you place it down there I'm just going to actually push this off screen, so it gives us some space. Uh, you can see here it's just called Teleport Location. Cool. Yeah, that works. Uh, I'm just going to call this FP Location 1 just for demonstration purposes and just naming conventions. So now, now that this is all placed and I have it set up on my player controller, I jump into game. So I go into Pi or Play and Editor, and I do, like I uh, said before, Shift Home. Uh, feel free to change that as you wish you can do that on the component itself so it doesn't have to be shift home this is just going to be from here on out and you can see fp location number one bam look at that teleport success awesome as you can see here uh if i'm looking around at different locations and if i use my teleport it keeps that same direction that i was looking at um so i don't know this is what like south i guess or whatever on the on the template uh, if we wanted to change that and say like, hey, you know what? Every time I am going to be teleporting here, I want to face, I want to face this direction. So just like we did before in the last template, all you need to do is actually uh, go into, you select the the actual teleport location. You can open up this category called te uh, teleport. Under logic, you'll find force camera rotation reset. So assuming that you have the same movement component or similar movement component or whatever uh, that Unreal has, uh, even in the first person setup as well, it will recognize it. Uh, it will orient your camera. Now, again, I don't know if you have a custom camera or whatever, <laughs> or if you have a custom movement component. You will probably have to do this yourself if you are advanced like that. Uh, but feel free to uh, dive into my blueprints and change it as you wish. But if you're using, you know, if I uh, load up the first person uh, character BP first person, that should be it, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, down here you have character movement component. It assumes that like it will take the uh, forced rotation of this. So if you're using something similar to that, then that will rotate uh, your camera forward. So just to demonstrate, now that I'm running around, let's say, I don't know, I'm looking this direction. Press shift home, location one, bam, look at that. And you can see reset camera rotation true. I'm now looking at those three, you know, same blue blocks. And there you go. That's uh, that simple. 
Uh, you can see here as well that uh, I can just take this and, you know, copy pasta this into a different location. Now let's press N there to put it on the ground. And I don't know, I'm getting a little too picky on this. And that'll be our location two. Uh, all right, so just to quickly make sure that, uh, like I demonstrated here, we have the hotkey setups as well. Uh, if you haven't seen it from the last video, here's how to quickly do them. Uh, you can select the key values directly in here if you wanted to, but that takes too long in my opinion. <laughs> so you can actually just press a keyboard shortcut. So you click on the uh, select a key value. Now you can press anything you want. It's any input that is registered via the inputs of Unreal, which is great. So you can see like, I, I don't know, right mouse button if you wanted to, or you can use the keyboard as well. So you'd like one or even number pad one if you wanted to. So you can see there number pad one showed up. And for me, I, I like shift because I'm just used to like, you know, uh, the the editor setup of like control one is uh, you save the location for a camera, you know, or actually, I don't know if they have, hey, look, they have some default ones. So if you actually press one on your first person template, you can see it takes you there. Uh, oh, look, two has one as well. That's neat. And then three takes you over here. That's funny. Uh, let's say I want to change it to like, yeah, this one. So control three. And now when I'm moving around, press three. There you go. Cool. Let's uh, let's match that. So we have three on that one. And I don't know. I like to do shift uh, just because it makes it easier for me to remember uh, from different engines. You know, control one was save a camera location and shift one was go to that location. But hey, whatever. You do you. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that was uh, um, I'm actually going to call that location three just to mem remember that. And I will make a new location too, uh, just for fun. Just so we're not confusing ourselves, right? All right, location two, cool. Uh, I'm going to also clear the hotkey. Oop, I don't want to escape. I want to set that to none. Uh, that way I'm not confusing myself. All right, cool. Uh, the other thing too is if you have multiple hotkeys for uh, uh, two different locations, it will just try to find the first one that was created um and use that one uh there's no actual sorting on this so this will be up to you to make sure that you have your hotkey set up uh accordingly uh but anyway we're dwelling too long on this all right going forward i now jump into game shift home you can see here i've added some new functionality where you can actually see which ones that have hotkeys to make it a lot easier for you to sort out uh your setups uh, so this is actually a good time to see how, you know, we have um, multiple different locations and they're not organized very nicely the way that I want them to. Maybe I want them specifically one, two, and then three, right? So you can actually do this multiple ways, uh, which is something that uh, I set up here very quickly with this uh, name priority. So if you wanted to specifically set up like name priority, we'll get into category uh, priority in a sec because we don't have a category name. So uh, just bear, we'll, we'll get there <laughs> one step at a time. If uh, we do the name priority, the category priority will make a lot of sense too. Right now, this thing has no name priority. Right now as well within the blueprint logic, I ignore everything zero and below. So even if you do like negative four, it doesn't register it. Nothing changes. So... You, uh, I should probably make that a minimum number and maybe set that so that you can't make it less than zero, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so for name priority, let's say it will take whatever the first one is as your top priority. So number one will always be first, number two will always be behind number one, and et cetera, et cetera. So number, uh, number one, two, three, four, five, just to make it super simple. So let's say I wanted this one as one, this guy is uh, FP location number three. We'll make that priority three, as you can see here. And then we'll make this one a name priority number two. Now, when I jump into game, this should be organized. Hooray, look at that. Very easy to set up. So you can set these up in whatever kind of order you want. Um, if you have uh, any sort of naming convention and then you had like a certain priority that you wanted to do, you can do that. Now, uh, the next thing that uh, I don't believe I've shown off yet was categories. So the cool thing about categories, if you don't have these teleport names inside of a category, the teleport names that are unassigned to a category will be last in your list. 
So let's say uh, category one. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm testing, you know, this area called combat. Let's say I had, you know, uh, some bad guys in this like small little arena here or something. I don't know. Whatever you wanted to set up. Uh, so we can call this category. Uh, this this particular spawn point uh, has a category called combat. And now if I jump into game, you can see here. I have a category now here called combat, and I can uh, drop down that list and see everything inside of that uh, particular category. Uh, I should have the logic here where, yeah, perfect. Uh, I have it saved so that if you have it collapsed, and then you're exiting out, and then you're jumping back in, it will save whatever your last uh, setup was for that particular category. Uh, now, if you wanted to, um, let's say, for instance, uh, just for visual purposes, uh, I'm going to take FP location number three, move it over here. Let's say it's also another spawn point location, or, I mean, sorry, teleport location. Uh, it also has a name priority of uh, two, and uh, this one has a category called combat. And this will always be below number one inside of the combat uh, location. And we open that up. Check that out. Hey, look at that. Let's say I wanted to change this to a lower priority. Let's say, I don't know, 9, just to get the point across. Even if it's inside of a category, but it has a lower naming priority than stuff that's not inside of a category, it will still uh, line up correctly. It will, will still be inside of that same list, uh, you know, called combat. And you can see here, if I had, like, another category in here, I don't know, let's call this... Uh, AI testing and let's say I wanted this category of this particular one higher than combat you uh, you probably saw there that combat was actually priority zero so combat itself when I have it here on this category um, now you will have to keep in mind that these uh, it will try to find the first one that has that one for combat and then it will assign that priority the the, the one that's closest to zero uh, what I'll, I'll show you in a second so now that I have AI testing as number one, I jump into game, AI testing is above combat, so hooray. Now, uh, let's say AI testing wasn't that important. Let's put it down to, you know, let's say three, just to show you uh, how I've done, done the sorting of this. And let's say, I don't know, different designers want a uh, different ca uh, category priority. Maybe this would be something your lead would want to determine what those category priorities are. So that way you don't mix how you have this thing displayed. But let's say we had, I don't know, this one is category priority number nine. This one was three. Uh, but this one, because now for your demo or whatever, uh, you want combat to be very important for you guys to look at and test so it's like top of your list well if i set this to category priority one on this one it will always take whatever's the closest to zero and make that the one that's the most highest priority so it'll ignore the ones that were uh well it'll check all them and then if the ones are actually higher priority then it will uh put that one at the top so you can see there combat has a priority of one instead of three so it moved the combat priority above uh the rest of them so yeah that should help you out in uh let's say you had i don't know a bunch of these right um let's take ai one and copy paste them a little bit you know we had a bunch of different locations right i'm not going to bother placing them uh everywhere but you can see here you have a bunch that will just start showing up <laughs> and you will quickly find that uh, this also turns into a scroll bar as well if you had like a bunch of them i'll show that real quick here oops uh, i need to press and hold alt so that guy there and you know that guy there and this guy here sure that works and now when I have all these, you know, expanded, there you go. We have a, a scroll bar. I needed to make one more. Oh, man. <laughs> Hang on, let's do two just to show off. There we go. And shift home. And we'll expand both of these. And there you go. So now that it's a scrollable bar. So you can set up to teleport to each one of these uh, locations in your list. And just to make sure, yeah, it, 
try not to pair up all the same hotkeys as the same ones because if i pressed you know uh shift f3 right now it takes the first one that it finds but all the rest of them are also shift f3 so if you are qa watching this <laughs> uh make sure to uh, report a bug that these are all the same hotkey uh to your local designer but yeah uh other than that you know close on teleport that works too and this uh totally works with your first person game uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next game. The next game is actually... Oh, actually, before I go, this is important. Uh, as you can see here, I'm shooting and bouncing off of this uh, collision because I'm doing a collision test. So bear in mind here, um, I'm glad I caught this before I left, is if you have custom collision for certain channels, this one's called projectile. And these are all set within your project settings. So you go into project settings and then you actually go into collision. You can see that projectile, the default response for any channel uh, that it is put into is block. So the only thing that you'll need to change on this to make sure that projectiles aren't uh, getting blocked on uh, this collision bounds, because it's supposed to be world dynamic and just overlap all. Uh, you can change these now. Uh, I would actually recommend doing that in the blueprint so we can open that up. And in here, the default uh, BP dev teleport location. Go into your the collision bounds itself. Here, I'll maximize this so it's easier to see. And under here, you can just change this now to custom instead and then tell it to either ignore or overlap. It's up to you. Just as long as it's not block and that should resolve your issue with shooting projectiles and bouncing it off the collision no more bouncing on the collision of the teleporter cool that is it uh, i'm glad i caught that before i close the video and i'll thank i uh, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one cheers